Hi sisters, it's Miranda. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hey, for the first time, why don't you subscribe and become the newest member of the Slashed Squad, which is what I call my subscribers. Here I review products you won't feel guilty buying and do looks you can actually recreate at home. Today I'm very excited to share with you this review that has taken me four days to film all the footage and kind of gather my thoughts. Today we're talking about none other than the Morphe and James Charles Artistry Palette. Can you see that? It's very white packaging. <laughs> So here is the palette once it's unboxed. I'm sure you have seen it, of course, because there are a ton of other videos. This is probably not the first one that you're seeing about this palette. However, I noticed when I was watching other videos that a lot of them were first impressions. And I actually feel like filming a first impression and sharing initial thoughts kind of does a disservice to this palette. And before I get too ahead of myself and spoil this review, I just feel like this is a palette that needs time and thorough testing to really formulate a well-rounded opinion. No tea, no shade to those of you who already uploaded your videos. I just felt like I needed time with it to really, you know, get to know it. <laughs> first thing I want to get out of the way, I bought this palette with my own money at my local Ulta Beauty store. They are slowly restocking them and I have no connection with Morphe. I'm not on their PR list. They have never sent me PR. So I just kind of wanted to put that out there if that does um, affect your opinion about my review. With that said, I am a sister. I am a fan of James Charles. I think he does incredible looks. As controversial as he is personally, I really admire his content and his work ethic. And I did have very high hopes that he would be putting out some type of makeup product soon, and my wishes were definitely granted with this palette. So here is the inside of the palette. Of course, as if you haven't seen it already, we have 39 shades with a row in the middle of kind of like a most used section. Now this palette is $39 on Morphe's website and at Ulta Beauty, which equals out to about a dollar a shade. $39 is a little bit on the higher side of what I like to cover on this channel. If you are new here, I dedicate this channel to budget beauty and drugstore beauty, or in general, just looking at things from a budget standpoint and keeping up with the latest trends without having to break the bank. However, James had expressed that his goal with this palette was for it to be somewhat of a one palette wonder where you could get any look you can dream of, whether it's neutral or rainbow or anything in between. So in essence, this could be a $39 investment and be your whole eyeshadow collection. Now, something to note, Ulta Beauty does not consider Morphe a prestige brand, which means that the dollar off coupon that they post on their website every single week will work on this palette. Plus, don't forget to use your ultimate rewards points to make your purchase. So even without my rewards points, because I'm kind of like hoarding those, I had a $5 off coupon that I just downloaded from Ulta.com and I got this for $34. So let's talk about this palette and the shades. So like I said, we have 39 shades and we're kind of split up into three main sections. We have a top section here that does lean more neutral. However, it is a very warm neutral color scheme. You're not going to find a lot of cool neutrals in this palette, but you will have enough to create an everyday glam look, a neutral smoky eye, you know, anything with more earthy tones. Then we have this middle section where obviously the pans are about double the size as the other pans in the palette. I think that's incredibly smart because these neutral shades are definitely very common in a lot of different looks. They're the ones that'll help you darken, help you blend, help you set, and probably the ones that you would hit pan on quicker if they were the same size as the rest of the palette. So I really, really love the idea of having a little bit more of those to apply to all the different looks. And then we have this bottom section, which is of course the rainbow shades. We have so many pigmented bright mattes in this palette, as well as some really pretty metallic and shimmer shades. And overall, the palette is very well balanced between mattes and shimmers and metallics. We also have a glittery kind of topper coat, although you can get it to be opaque but uh, this shade here is more of a topper. But also the tones of colors that we have, we have the obvious crease shades and then obviously we have spooky here that can deepen up any color. We've got a lot of variety when it comes to lid and highlight shades. So you just have a lot here to work with. I don't feel like with this, you're gonna have to go into any other palette to finish your look, which I personally look for when buying a palette. You know, when you look at these shades individually, they might not be revolutionary or completely one of a kind. However, to have them all in one palette really does kind of unlock something in my brain personally and helps inspire me to mix and match. I personally don't like to juggle products or dip into a bunch of different palettes to finish my look. So to have everything in one, everything that I would need to finish a look in one place is really, really helpful. Now, James did mention in his reveal video that one of the 
ideas for this palette was to be like the perfect travel palette where you'd have every shade you'd ever want in one place. But for me, I mean, this is a big palette. I mean, hello. Also, there's no mirror inside, so I just have a different criteria as far as what I look for in a travel palette. But I understand what he's saying, especially when it comes to makeup artists, so you don't have to pack as much in your kit. It can all be in one palette. But like for the everyday consumer, probably not what you'd think of as a travel palette. Also, one gripe that I have with packaging, I don't mind not having a mirror because like I said, I probably won't take this traveling with me, but the names of the shades are printed on a plastic insert. I never keep the plastic inserts that come with palettes, so that's kind of annoying because I am going to have to keep this to remember what shades I'm using and to, you know, relay that information to you if I ever do a tutorial. So I'm kind of bummed that they weren't just printed right under the pans. This is annoying. Now over the last three days I created three different looks with this palette because I did want to test out a range of shades in this palette. I feel like a lot of the first impressions that are on YouTube right now are hit or miss depending on what shades the person decides to use because some work like normal eyeshadows and some don't. So I'm gonna take you back to the first time that I used this palette and show you the look that I created. So the first time I used this, I primed my eyes with the MAC Paint Pot because that is what James has repeatedly suggested to use with this palette. I just wanted to get the best performance possible. My first look consisted mostly of mattes and I had absolutely no issue blending. In fact, I loved how well everything diffused together. I did a halo eye cut crease and had no issues blending over the concealer either. It was really important to me to test the shade You're Kidding which is a true red. It's one of the highlights of this collection and it did not disappoint. I did kind of go light at first and build it up just because it is such a bold color and even still, you know, working in layers, everything applied very smoothly and evenly. I did try applying one of the shades wet, which was my bad because it was more of a satin shade than a metallic, so it really didn't need to be wet and actually looked better dry in my opinion. The finished look was honestly fire. It's one of my favorites that I have ever done. Also, I did not have any any staining after eight hours of wear. So I thought that was important to point out because I did use the pigment shades in this look. The second time I used this palette, I wanted to use a cheaper eyeshadow primer, so I grabbed the $1 AOA Perfect Eyeshadow Primer from Shop Miss A. And for this look, I wanted to test the blues and purples, and I learned quickly that these perform best in padding motions for both applying and blending together. I basically pat on the color and build up to the intensity I wanted, and then very, very lightly blend out to diffuse the shade in small circular motions, and I would repeat this until I got the look that I desired. When blending the shades together, I would go back and forth between colors, patting them over one another to create the gradient. I also want to point out that for all of these cut crease looks, I used a drier concealer formula, which is very important to do if you don't want a line of demarcation around the edges. Also in this look, I used the glitter shade Artistry, which James himself suggests as a topper, but when you apply wet, you can build up to full opacity. You just have to layer it. Now for the third look, the one I'm wearing right now, I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on how these shadows performed and how to put them on. I went back into some purples and blues and tested the pinks and greens for the first time. The padding motion was key to making this look seamless. important important to address that I don't feel like is being talked about enough, but there was a video from a YouTuber called Jen Loves Reviews who pointed this out very eloquently. In James' original launch video, he talked about how the formulas vary within this palette. Some shades are not 
eyeshadows, they're pressed pigments, which means they are just pigment pressed into a pan. His words. Now what he did not tell us in that review, what Jen Loves Reviews pointed out in her video, and what the packaging kind of tells you if you look close enough, is that some of these shades are actually not eye approved by the FDA. Now this isn't super scandalous on its own because this isn't the first time that we've seen that. The first time that I saw something like that was with the Urban Decay Electric Palette. It's in the packaging. Some of these are not eye safe and everyone's like, but where else am I going to put it? Uh, we see the same thing also in Jeffree Star palettes. And sometimes pigments are even deemed eye safe in other countries, but not in the U.S. because the FDA is what some people consider outdated. But regardless, James didn't really talk about this in his video, and I feel like it's important because what this means is, is that if you do have sensitive skin, this might not be a formula that works really well for you. If you are concerned with staining, you might want to be extra careful when applying some of these pigments. So when you look at the actual box that the palette comes in, not the palette itself, but the box, you'll see the ingredient list for the two different types of formulas in this palette. One has an icon of an eye and the other has an icon of an eye with uh, cross through it. It's definitely fine print style. It's not really noticeable when you pick up the palette. There's been a bit of controversy around this. I'm not going to get into the tea, but it is something important to point out if you haven't heard about it already. With that said, James has promoted, you know, some of these shades by placing them around the eye in his tutorials. I have not experienced anything and I actually do have sensitive eyelids. So move forward at your own risk, but um, I personally have not had any issues or sensitivity with the non eye safe pigments. Now something else to be said about the fact that some of these shades are pigments and not typical eyeshadows is that there are some nuances to how they should be applied. James has a whole 30 minute video where he shares tips and tricks on how to get these shades to really perform the most. And in that video, one of the most important things that he points out is that they should go over a dry primer, not a concealer, not a sticky base, a primer that dries down. He also talks about how the pigments go on much stronger with a patting motion, how some of the shades go on better with the fingertips, and that's all well and good. However, not everyone's gonna watch that 30 minute video, and this palette doesn't come with any literature. What I mean by that is like, you know, some palettes they come with cards or even like illustrations of like where to put the eyeshadow and different looks you can do. I think this palette could have really benefited from something like that because there are going to be a lot of people who pick it up without watching that video. They're going to put it on like a normal eyeshadow and be like, because if you want the one line review, it's going to be this palette is awesome once you get used to it. Once you have tested all the shades, see how they perform on your skin, see how they perform over your primer, see how they perform blending in with each other. It's kind of like learning how to do makeup again when you're working with formulas that you're not used to. That might seem like a lot of work to some, but I feel like this palette is really geared towards makeup enthusiasts who enjoy just sitting down and doing their makeup for no reason and creating really bold, colorful, or neutral glam looks and just playing around and I think that's exactly who this palette is for and who would enjoy the palette the most. If you're looking for a palette where you can just throw it in your collection, use it quickly in the morning or not the door, this is not the palette for you. Overall, I have a very positive opinion of the Morphe and James Charles Artistry palette, but I have a negative opinion about how it was marketed and the lack of information that I feel like could have been included to help consumers get the most out of it. I feel like this palette is definitely going to catch the eye of people who might not even necessarily watch James, but it's a gorgeous palette, like why wouldn't you pick it up? And if they don't watch that 30 minute video with all of James' tips and tricks, I can see a lot of people getting very frustrated with the learning curve of the pressed pigments. If I hadn't watched that video and I just picked this up blind and started using it, I would honestly probably think it was garbage. Like I said earlier, if this is the first time you're using a pressed pigment formula, then you're going to have to sit down, play with the palette, and learn. And once you do that, you will unlock the potential that is this palette and be able to create amazing looks with it. For me personally, I think this was a palette that was definitely worth the money. I'm very glad that I picked it up even though I have a lot of these shades in other palettes dispersed throughout my collection, having them all in front of me really just makes something click. And it really just gets the wheels turning so I can create cohesive looks that are unique. So those are my, whoa, oh my God, I dropped it. Please be okay, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Okay, everything is fine, it's drop proof, y'all. No, don't drop it, please don't drop it.
So this palette has been selling out like crazy worldwide. Ulta Beauty has been doing a pretty good job at restocking, so I'll leave the link below if you wanna check it out. What do you all think of the James Charles Artistry palette? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Have you tried it? Is it on your wish list for the holidays? I definitely want you all to sound off in the comments below. If you wanna see more palette reviews, hit the thumbs up button, and don't forget to hit subscribe and become the newest member of the Slashed Squad. I'm gonna be announcing my 20,000 subscriber giveaway in the next couple videos. There are going to be multiple prizes. So stay tuned for that and don't forget to turn on video notifications so you know as soon as it goes live. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!